Hi, everybody. So uh, now we're going to talk about proof by contradiction, which is a kind of a trick. Uh, that's not really fair, but it's a very old argument for uh, solving certain kinds of uh, logical problems, which um, is very powerful and also kind of tricky. And uh, so let me uh, give you a little background, and then we'll look at some concrete examples of some really famous results from antiquity that are, are obtained using proof by contradiction. So the idea behind proof by contradiction is we, we want to show that something's true. So we assume we start by assuming that it's false. And then we do a bunch of logical steps and we conclude from this falsehood something which is obviously false. And so our original assumption that our thing was false led to a completely false conclusion. And that means that that original assumption must not have been false. It must have been true. So um, here's an ex kind of a crazy example. OK, so my dog. Here's the proposition. My dog is not an elephant. OK, well, so the proof would be suppose my dog is an elephant. So we assume Well, elephants have trunks, but my dog does not have a trunk. So my dog has a trunk. I should do it this way. Because my dog is an elephant and elephants have trunks, my dog has a trunk. On the other hand, I know that my dog does not have a trunk. This is a contradiction because my dog can't both have a trunk and not have a trunk. So my original hypothesis that my dog is not an, uh, my dog is an elephant must have been false. So my dog is not an elephant. OK, that might seem like a swindle. Let's look at an example uh, from math, which might uh, give you a little bit uh, more of a sense of what's going on. So the first, maybe the most famous application of proof by contradiction is to show that the square root of 2 is not a rational number. So let's just think for a minute about um, what that means. So uh, the square root of 2 has really only one property. When you square it, you get 2. And if the square root of 2 were rational, what does that mean? It means that it's equal to a over b, where b, a and b are integers, and b is not 0. And therefore, if you square both sides of this equation, you get 2 equals a squared over b squared. And therefore, a squared minus 2b squared equals 0. So if the square root of 2 is rational, then a squared minus 2b squared equals 0 has a solution where a and b are integers, and b is not 0. So notice that a squared minus 2b squared clearly has a solution. You could take b equal to 0. But remember, I, mul I multiply both sides of this equation here by b squared. And in my original fraction, b had to not be 0, because the denominator of a fraction can't be 0. So to show that the square root of 2 is not a rational number, we have to prove that there are there does not exist a squared a and b so that a squared over b squared equals 2 where b is not 0 or put another way we have to show that we can't find a solution to a squared minus 2b squared equals 0 where b is not 0 now ordinarily i would uh, kind of approach this in an incremental way but um, 
for reasons that have to do with the way proofs by contradiction work, it's hard to do that. So instead, I'm just going to tell you the trick up front, and then we can talk about it later. So we need a lemma. Remember that a lemma is a proposition which is small and necessary for um, a bigger result. And the lemma is a very simple lemma. It says that if a squared is an even number, then a is an even number. Here I should say a is an integer. So um, the easiest way to prove this is to use the contrapositive. That is to say that we suppose that a, a is not even. So we suppose the contrapositive says if a is odd, then a squared is odd. So it's the not q implies not p version. That's what the contrapositive is. So let's suppose a is odd. Then we write a is 2k plus 1 for some k. k is an integer. Then a squared is 2k plus 1 squared, which is 4k squared plus 4k plus 1, which is odd. Why is it odd? Because this number here is clearly even. It's 2 times 2k squared plus 2k, and you add 1, and you add up an odd number. So this little argument here shows that a odd implies a squared odd, and therefore a squared even implies a even. So let's just keep that in mind for the moment. OK, so um, let's go ahead and prove this proposition by contradiction. So we're trying to show that the square root of 2 is not a rational number. So right, that was the original proposition. So we're going to suppose that square root of 2 is a rational number. And then we know that we can find positive, because it's rational, we can find positive integers a and b where b isn't 0, so that a over b quantity squared is equal to 2. So 2 is equal to a squared over b squared. Now, the other thing we know is we can assume we, we can assume we can choose a and b not both even. Because we can put our fraction in lowest terms. And if they were both even, we could cancel powers of 2 until one of them was odd. So I hope you believe that. Uh, if you have a fraction, you can always assume that either the numerator or the denominator is odd. So either a or b is odd. Well, if we simplify this equation a little bit, we get a squared equals 2b squared. And that visibly tells us that a squared is even. And if a squared is even, our lemma tells us that a is even, right? And because we know that 1 of a or b is odd, if a is even, we must know that b is odd. On the other hand, A must be equal to 2 times m for some m in z, because it's even. And therefore, 2m squared has to equal 2b squared, because A is 2m. So therefore, 4m squared equals 2b squared, and therefore, 2m squared equals b squared. Well, in that case, b squared is even. And therefore, by the lemma, b is even. So what have we shown? We've shown by assuming that the square root of 2 is a rational number, we've proved that b is odd and b is even. And that clearly is a contradiction. That can't happen. 
It's a statement which is always false. That's what a contradiction is. So something must have gone wrong, and the only thing here which could have gone wrong to account for this is that our original assumption must have been false. We can't find such an a and a b, and therefore the square root of 2 is an irrational number. So this is uh, an example of proof by contradiction. Now let's give a different proof of the fact that the square root of 2 is, um, is not a rational number. Uh, Again, it's going to be a proof by contradiction, but it's going to be a different contradiction. And uh, this is going to illustrate the fact that when you're doing a proof by contradiction, any, any contradiction is going to work. It isn't there's not these, these proofs can be kind of open-ended. So I want to do it a little bit differently. So here we have the assumption, just like before, that if the square root of 2 is a rational number, then we can find positive integers a and b with b non-zero so that a squared minus 2b squared um, is equal to 0. And since b isn't 0, it's pretty clear that a is not 0. So if we have a solution to this equation, a and b are both positive, not 0. Now, if there is a solution to this equation, and there might be lots of solutions, but let's take the solution which has the um, smallest value of a that's possible. So among all choose the solution a0, zero, b0, zero, where a0 zero is as small as possible. Now, we can do this because if we just imagine in our heads, I mean, there are no solutions, so this is all a very strange conversation, but imagine there were solutions. We could imagine writing them all down, and we could look at them, and we could look at all their a's, and we could pick the one where the a is the smallest. Now, there might actually be several that have uh, the smallest a. We could worry about that, but let's just pick one of the ones where the a is as small as possible. Okay, so we have this particular solution, a0, b0. Now, let's notice something. a0 squared is 2b0 squared. So a0 squared is even. And by our lemma, this may sound a little bit familiar, a0 is even. And therefore, a0 is 2 times m for some m in z. Now we substitute that into this equation. Notice, by the way, that m is less than a0 because uh, it's, it's a0 over 2, so it's smaller. So now we can substitute that in, and we get 4m squared equals 2b0 squared, or 2m squared equals b0 squared. So therefore, b0 is even. b0 squared is even. So b0 is even. So we can write b0 is 2n. And we substitute that in. And we get 2m squared equals 4n squared. And we divide by 2. And we get m squared equals 2n squared. Well, now look what's happened. We started with a solution where a0 was supposedly the smallest among all solutions. a0 was the smallest solution you could find. And now, by dividing out some twos, I made a new solution, m squared, n, m and n, where m squared is 2n squared. So m and n is a solution. But m is less than a0. And that's a contradiction, because a0 was supposed to be the smallest solution. This is called the method of, maybe I'll just fit it in here. So therefore, uh, we have a contradiction. The contradiction is that a0 is the smallest solution, 
And there's another solution which is smaller than it. So square root of 2 is not rational. So we, um, this is called the method of infinite descent because we started with a solution that we thought was the smallest and then we showed that you could make a smaller one. And actually, if you think about this, we could just keep doing this argument. We could keep making smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller solutions, but these are all integers. You can't start with a bunch of integers and then keep finding smaller and smaller and smaller positive integers. Eventually, you're going to have to hit one and then there's no place left to go. So that's another solution another uh, argument using contradiction.